Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. So this week we are going to create our very own vector hipster logo in Adobe Illustrator. So this exact thing that you're looking at right now is the outcome. This is what we're going to be creating together. And we will be creating this clean version and then I'll show you how to add a little grit to it um, just to give it a little more of a handmade or dimensional feel. So we're just going to jump right in and get started. And the first thing we're going to do is create this kind of bad shape. Uh, so as you can see, I kind of have four points on each side. So we're going to start off with an eight point polygon, octagon. So I'm going to come over here to um, my rectangle tool drop down and select polygon tool and double click and select eight size eight sides and uh, a radius doesn't really matter what it is because we'll just scale it up to what we need so I'm gonna hit OK and this little dude is kind of small so I'm gonna scale him up I'm just gonna hit V on my keyboard so he's selected hold shift and scale up so everything's proportional okay so I'm gonna align the side here and next let me make it a little bit bigger Okay, so now I need to kind of stretch it a little bit and you can do that by hitting A on your keyboard, rubber band selecting these right points, click on the bottom point and as you're dragging hold shift so it'll stay straight and that looks close. Okay, so now let me uh, make sure it's filled with black just so we can see everything better. If yours looks like mine, you can just click on the white fill, hit none and then just hit this little arrow and it'll switch it so the stroke will become the fill. Okay, as you can see, I've got these softer corners going on here. So in order to do that, um, we just need to come over here to our appearance palette. And if you don't see this, you can get to it by going window appearance and it'll show up. So I'm just gonna toggle down this little FX button, go to stylize round corners, and I'm going to be applying this exact radius 0.15 inches to my corners. So I'm gonna hit preview so you can see what it's gonna look like and I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm going to expand the appearance because I know this is how I want it to look. Um, it's just kind of a, a final detail that you want to do with your logo when you're happy with it. Uh, if you still want it to be editable so you can change uh, the amount of roundness your corner has, then don't do this next step until the very end when you're perfectly happy with everything. But since I'm good right now, I'm going to go ahead and do it. So you can see over here in my appearance palette, I can still click on round corners and change the radius. But when I go object, expand, exp appearance, it goes away and you can see I don't have those sharp lines, just the outline around them anymore. So this is my shape now. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is create this arced text. And there's a couple ways that you can make arc text. A lot of people use the warp text tool, but that actually distorts your text in a pretty non-friendly, editable way. Uh, I've always found that the smartest and most beneficial part for you uh, as you're going back through and if you want to make any edits, it's always best to type along a path and you have a lot more control over how it's going to look in the end uh, versus a warp where you're pretty um, just stuck with whatever presets are there. So we're going to type our text along an arced path and I'll show you how to do that. So let me drag this down a little bit so it's easier to see. I'm going to hit P on my keyboard and this activates my pen tool and I'm just going to kind of come up from this edge, this further most uh, left edge, and I'm just going to click once. And then I'm going to come over here and kind of come up this edge. You can see my smart guides are kind of sticking to everything, but once um, I've got an edge on this edge and aligned with that point, I'm going to click again. And now I've got a straight line that goes from edge to edge uh, of my badge. And now I need a point right in the middle so I know I'm getting perfectly arced from the center point. And in order to find the middle of this line, all I have to do is hit V on my keyboard, which selects the line. And then I need to hover over. You can see with this uh, bounding box around the line, these points right here are actually indicating the center point of that line for me. So if I hover right over the line, hit the plus key on my keyboard, that'll give me the add anchor point tool. And if I just click, now I've got a point right in the middle. Next, I want to hold shift C, which is called, I always forget, the convert anchor point tool. So this basically adds handles to uh, a point that doesn't have any handles. So if I just click and drag, you can see I've got handles now, which enables me to add some curve to the line. So I'm just going to keep these straight though, and I can make sure they stay straight by holding shift on my keyboard. And I'm just going to go a little more than halfway on each side with my handles. 
Next, I'm going to hit A on my keyboard, and this is my direct select tool. I'm just going to click on the center point again and drag up. And now you can see I'm getting this nice arced line, and it's perfectly arced from the center, which is exactly what I wanted. Next, I'm, I'm going to hit T on my keyboard, and this is my text tool. And if I hover over this furthermost point right here and I click, now I've made um, a path that I can type on. So it no longer has a fill or a stroke it's just a path that i can type on and i'm going to type uh, every tuesday there and the font that i'm using is called blanche and it's a free font it's kind of a pay what you want font so if you want it to be free you can get it for free so uh, i'm going to leave links to all the fonts that i'm using in the video description and they are all free so uh, make sure you to check that out if you want to use these same fonts. So if I come over here to my character palette, you can see uh, Blanche is the name of the font, and it's 48 points is what I'm using, and it's got a tracking of 50. So I'm just going to type out every Tuesday, and this is an all caps font, so if I type in all lowercase, uh, I'm actually getting caps out of it. So um, that's what I did. I didn't type in caps at all. I just typed all lowercase, and this is how it looks. Okay. So now that's all set and we can uh, make this white. So I'm going to come over here to my color palette, change it to white and then drag it into my badge. And that looks good. Oh, the other thing is, um, so mine automatically went to the center. You saw how I was typing um, everything out in the center. And if your text starts over here on the edge, you can change it to the center just by coming over here into your paragraph palette. And you can get to that by going window type paragraph and it'll show up and then just click on this uh, align center text and then you'll have centered text all right let's go back to where we were all right so this is just above center in here and just to make this uh, go a little quicker I'll give you the settings for these other elements so the dot com that I'm using is 19 points 50 for the tracking I'm just gonna bring it down here and I'll show you how I make these little elements right here. So I'm going to come zoom in a little bit. I'm hitting the backslash key on my keyboard, and that gives me the line tool. And you can see you can get to it over here as well. So I'm going to come over here to my stroke palette. And if you don't see this, you can get to it by going window stroke. And um, I'm just going to click and drag, and I'm going to hold shift so I get a straight line. And I want to make sure that my stroke is white, so if I click uh, on the stroke area and then I can put white in it and back to my stroke palette I want this to be 0.5 so half a point and I want a rounded cap and a rounded corner so the the ends are round and now I'm just gonna click and this time I'm not holding shift because I want it to be a little bit of an angle I'm totally freehanding this and then I'm gonna do a second one that's even a little bit smaller okay so I'm gonna select these two whoops I'm gonna select these two lines and I'm going to group them together by going Command G or Control G if you're on a PC. And then I'm going to hold Alt, drag, hold Shift to keep it straight, and then right click, transform, reflect. And I want to reflect over a horizontal axis and hit OK. And then I'm going to drag back up and hold Shift while I'm doing that. OK, and now I want to group all of these together. So I'm holding Shift as I click all of those. And then Command G or or Control G on a PC to group them together. And then I'm gonna hold Alt, begin to drag, and as I'm dragging, I'm holding Shift to keep it straight. Right click, transform, reflect. And now I'm gonna reflect over a vertical axis. And now I'm just gonna drag it a little further and hold Shift while I do it to keep it straight. And then you can just kinda fuss with where you want it positioned. So that's those elements, super quick. Next, we're gonna come up here and replicate this um, i'll give you the settings for this font right here this is nova Cento. i use this for a lot of tutorials so uh, if you have followed my tutorials before you probably already have this font um, if not i will also leave a link for this i'm using nova Cento sans wide in the lightweight and um, it's six point and i've got a tracking of 150. so i'm just going to bring this down just to save us all a little bit of time and then I just drew out uh, a couple more lines, which I'll do again. Um, so I hit backslash on my keyboard to get the line tool, or I could click over here. I'm going to click, drag, um, hold shift while you do it to keep it straight. And then come over here in my stroke palette. I want it to be 0.25. 
and you can change the color in your color palette and I want to make sure it's got a rounded cap and a rounded corner once again. Hit V on my keyboard, hold Alt, drag, hold Shift, and this one I don't have to reflect because it's just a line. And now um, if you noticed before I had a little icon that I made um, just to show like the selection tool because we do a lot of tutorials and use the computer a lot for my blog. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to draw it really quick um, so it's not going to be perfect so don't judge. So I'm going to hit P on my keyboard so I got my pen tool. I'm just going to click and freehand this. And if I hit A on my keyboard I can click and move some of the points so it doesn't look as bad. <laughs> Alright, we're going to go with that for now. And I'm going to make it just slightly bigger. Okay. Actually, maybe not because it looks bad. Alright, we'll keep it small. And just kind of move things um, as you like them. Okay, last thing. We need to add this little white bar right here and then add what our website's all about. So I'm just gonna come over here. Let me zoom in so you can see it. I'm gonna hit M on my keyboard for my rectangle tool and then I'm just gonna freehand a rectangle. Let me nudge it up a little bit. And actually I'm gonna make this uh, a different color. I'll make it blue so it's just easier to see. Okay, so with this selected, I'm going to hold shift and select this badge in the background. And then I'm going to come over here to my Pathfinder tool. And if you don't see this, uh, you can get to it by going Window Pathfinder. And I'm going to click this little icon uh, called Divide. And after I do that, this automatically groups everything together and it brings it to the front because it brings it to the entire thing to the position of your furthest forward object. And since I just drew this, this is the one in front, so everything moved to the front. So since it's grouped, I need to ungroup it. So I'm going to hit Command Shift G or Control Shift G if you're on a PC. And then I'm just going to select these little edges because I don't need them. And this one I need to change to being white now. And I'm going to select um, just the black areas of the badge and then group those together. So I'm going to hit Command G or Control G if you're on a PC. And um, then I'm going to select this strip that we just made as well and send everything to the back. So I'm going to right click, arrange, send it back. And now it's behind everything. Pretty easy. All right, so the last thing that we need to do is just type out our description and to save time, I'm gonna show you my settings and I'm just gonna drag this into this badge. And it's Nova Cento, sans wide, it's light, eight points and it's tracked out um, at 100. So I'm just gonna bring this down here. And um, once again, I can center align it with the badge with it selected. I'm gonna select the badge as well by holding shift and clicking and then I'm gonna release everything and just click on the badge so whatever I align aligns to this selection. So I'm going to click this icon up here for horizontal align center and you saw it just nudged over just slightly. So now everything is centered. Okay, so that's our badge pretty quickly and if you want to add texture I'm just going to show you how to do that pretty quickly. Um, so I'm just going to make a copy over here so you can see it separately. So the texture that I used is a texture that I created and I'll leave a link um, of where you can pick it up. I actually give two of them away for free over on my blog. Uh, so you can pick those up and you can also check out the full set if you're interested. So I'm using the Grit 4 texture, um, which I have open over here. So I'm just going to copy it and paste it in. And I'm going to scale it down because it's really big. And I just want to make sure that it's going to cover my whole badge and kind of position the texture in a place that feels good. Um, like I didn't want it directly in the center, I wanted it off center a little bit where th this majority uh, of the grit is. And as you can see, because it's black, it's only showing up in the white, but I only want it to show up on the black and I want it to have enough contrast that like you can see right here um, where it's subtle but still noticeable. So I'm actually just reducing uh, the black slightly. So I'm going to change it to 80% black. And let's see how that looks. That looks good. 
Okay, so I need to mask it within this shape because I only want um, this texture, texture to show up within the bad shape. So I need to make a copy of this bad shape. So I'm gonna hit Command C, and then I'm gonna hit Command F or Control F if you're on a PC, and that will paste it right in front. Because uh, whenever you're masking, your texture in this case will mask into the shape that's in front of it. So you don't want your texture in front of the shape. Um, okay, so the other thing is, is because these are two separate pieces, it's only gonna mask into one of those pieces unless I tell the computer that this should be considered as one shape. And you can do that by creating what's called a compound path um, or a compound shape. And you can do that by hitting Command-8 or Control-8 on a PC and now I've got a compound path uh, or compound shape. And now I'm gonna um, hold shift and select the texture, right click, make clipping mask. And now it's masked in, but as you can see, it's only, um, it's in front of everything and I want it to be behind the text, but in front of the black. So I'm gonna send this to the back, transfer, or arrange, send to back. And now the black I need to send to the back. So I'm gonna right click, arrange, send it back. And now it's perfect. There we go. So that is how to create a hipster logo in Adobe Illustrator. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe and I will see you next week. Thanks for watching.